GNC stands for General Nutrition Centers, which I think is a bit of a boring name, but it describes them perfectly. These places are all about vitamins and supplements and, well, I guess, general nutrition. I'm guessing that you already know all of this, because at their peak in 2015, they had more than 9,000 locations. They were in every state in the US, in addition to franchises all over the world, that is really big for a vitamin and supplement store. In fact, I challenge you to name any other that even compares to them in size. There isn't anything. Around that time, they estimated that they were 11 times larger than the next largest comparable retailer. And here's a few quick ways that they've separated themselves from those others. They would use the relationship with vendors to be among the first to secure new products. They would research and develop their own products under their own labels. They would hire knowledgeable employees that could help advise customers. You can see how their size was working to their advantage. Well, the reason I'm talking about them today is because on June 24th, 2020, they filed for bankruptcy. The immediate issue, as with any bankruptcy, is that they borrowed a bunch of money and when it came time to pay it back, they weren't able to. In this case, it's in the amount of hundreds of millions of dollars, which makes this a big deal. Now, as I say this, it's all still new and developing, but it's looking like they're going to make it through it. Probably use the opportunity to close some stores, reduce their debt, reevaluate things, and hopefully emerge from it in a better position. In 2020, the pandemic caused them to close 30% of their stores, which understandably caused their revenue to go down. Unfortunately, they were really counting on those sales to pay off these lingering debts, and when the money wasn't there, well, we can see what happened. Again, that's all the very immediate issue. It's what we see on the surface. To identify what really happened here, we have to look a little deeper. See, despite being able to separate themselves in the market, the reality is that GNC has been struggling for quite a while now. I am confident in saying that this bankruptcy probably would have happened soon anyway. I mean, just taking a look at their stock price, it is pretty clear that things were going bad well before 2020. They started that year at 268, which was down from their peak of well over $60 around six years earlier. Typically, I try to avoid talking about stock price very much, but in this case, it's a very immediate visual of what's been happening, and I'm going to argue is actually the cause of what's been happening. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but before I get into the financial part, I want to talk more about GNC because this is not the first time they found themselves in trouble. This company goes all the way back to 1935 when David Shikarian opened a small health food store in Pittsburgh called LacZoom. It was a bit ahead of its time because in 1935, it's strange to say it, but health was not as big of a concern. This entire health and wellness industry was almost non-existent, though he still managed to find a large enough customer base to not only stay alive, but to open a second location within his first year. Yogurt was a top seller back then, again, strange to say, but this was one of the few places you can find it. Then in the 1950s, when shopping malls were still just starting to emerge, this was one of the few stores that were almost exclusively located inside of them. In 1960 is when he changed the name of the store to GNC, and not long after is when the industry really started to pick up. It was such a sudden, strong change that many criticized it for just being a fad. Admittedly, parts of it were, but GNC just ran with it. They were growing faster than ever, mostly because what they were already doing suddenly became popular. Selling health food and vitamins in shopping malls may not have been the most popular business in the 1950s, but in the 1980s, it was perfect. The start of the decade was better than ever before, but by the middle of it, things were starting to go bad. I I think that the number one issue was that the industry had grown beyond them. The grocery stores had caught up to the health trend, and for the first time, many of them were opening sections that were dedicated to it. It was a level of competition that they had yet to experience. In addition, they were developing a kind of negative reputation. They were seen as more of a hippie, naturalistic type of health store, rather than one that promoted athleticism and fitness. In the 1960s, that was a great approach, but by the 1980s, it was seen as being more shady and outdated. Some of the claims that they made about their products were questionable, to a point where they had a bunch of pending lawsuits concerning it. Overall, they didn't have the best reputation and they just
just weren't doing too well. Then in 1984, the founder, David Shikarian, died of cancer, and the company used the opportunity to try to fix things. They brought in this guy Jerry Horn as their new president and CEO because he had a history of turning around struggling businesses. And I question whether or not GNC would still exist today without him, because over the next five years, he led them through this effective transformation. A big part of it was selling their mail order business. They had started it during World War II, and it now represented about 15% of their sales. They then used that money to close 300 poor performing stores, renovate the ones that made the cut, and spent millions of dollars to settle those lawsuits. They also did what I would consider a logical move when they switched their focus more toward athletics and bodybuilding as an attempt to distance themselves away from that negative hippie reputation. And then throughout the next couple of decades, they operated using similar principles with minor adaptations. All of that, combined with a few acquisitions of smaller competitors, helped them grow from fewer than 1,000 locations to start the 90s into the 9,000 that they had at their peak 25 years later. So going back to their bankruptcy, in the years leading up to it, their sales actually haven't been as bad as you might expect, but they are moving in the wrong direction, so I should try to explain it. My biggest reason would be an obvious one, the internet. It has not been good for businesses that rely on physical locations, especially ones that are so reliant on malls. We have already seen how much they've relied on them over the years. Unlike almost any other company out there, malls have been a big part of their business plan for the last 70 years. When malls got really popular in the 1980s, all of that foot traffic was a big help to GNC, and now the opposite is happening. I know I'm not saying anything revolutionary here, but it has been impactful. In addition to this, I'm gonna add the closing of Rite Aid stores. Walgreens bought about half of all the Rite Aid locations a few years ago and have been closing many of them down. That has been meaningful for GNC because they've been working with Rite Aid going back to 1998. They even opened all of these GNC stores inside of Rite Aid stores, so now if the Rite Aid closes, so does the GNC, and that's what's been happening. There are more parts to it, but I think that would explain most of it. Like I said, it's not a major decline in revenue. So if that's not the main cause of their issues, your next thought might be that they're expanding too fast and their expenses are out of control. Well, here's their net income over that time. The years that jump out are 2016 and 2017. They were far more negative than anything else, but for this one, we have to look a little deeper. Those losses were a result of major asset impairments over those two years. In 2016, it was a goodwill impairment, and in 2017, it was a brand name impairment, which are both intangible assets that are related to the value of the company. I know it, I'm losing people. Basically, their stock price went down, and their market cap lost billions of dollars over that time, so GNC had to evaluate things and admit that the company had lost a lot of its value. These negative numbers are a result of that correction. It's not spending money, but it is a reduction of assets. My point is, aside from that stuff, they actually made money during those years. Through 2018, they brought in more money than they spent to run the business, hundreds of millions of dollars each year. But if you remember, they filed for bankruptcy because they didn't have money to pay off their debts. So now the question is, where did all that money go? As I've been indicating, GNC has a lot of debt. They've had it for a while. In 1989, that guy behind the turnaround plan, Jerry Horn, he got together with some other executives and bought the company. You're not gonna like this, but it was a leveraged buyout that added $360 million in debt, which was only added to in the following years. I don't know exactly how they were affected by all of these financially, but GNC was sold in 1999, 2003, and 2007 before becoming a public company again in 2011. Here are their total liabilities over the last decade, and I want to point out that they were increasing by about $700 million between 2011 and 2016. Over that time, they made over a billion dollars in profits, yet still borrowed an additional 700 million. So again, the question is, where did all that money go? They should have $1.7 billion from all of that. The answer is, they used it to buy their own stock. Now, there was a lot of cash going around, and you can't exactly assign what money came from where, but over that same time period, they spent almost $1.7 billion on stock repurchases. In 2015, when asked about it, their CEO said, at current levels, we believe our share price does not reflect GNC's intrinsic value, and consistent with our stated objectives, believe 
believe now is an opportune time to increase our share repurchases. So, in 2015, let's see, going back to our stock graph, all right, 2015, GNC thought that it was a great time to buy their stock because they felt it was undervalued. All right, I don't think that was a good call. In fact, looking at this graph, from 2011 to 2015, they were very aggressive in repurchasing their own stock. And now, at a time like this, when they need some quick money, what are they supposed to do, resell it? It's not worth anything anymore. I can't say the exact reason they did this. They said they thought it was undervalued, but it's commonly done to raise a company's stock price. When they repurchase it, they're taking those shares off the market. Fewer shares outstanding means each share represents a higher percentage of the company. It makes the earnings per share go up and generally makes the lasting shares more attractive. I also want to mention that they were giving out millions of dollars in dividends over the same time, which are also intended to make the stock seem more attractive. Based on all of this, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they became too obsessed with the stock price. Now, you could potentially argue that they needed to do all of it. Without the buybacks or the dividends, no one would want the stock, so they were necessary to prevent a terrible fall. If that was the case, then I'll argue that they had no business being on the stock market anyway. They should have been looking for a buyer back in 2013. Alternatively, maybe they should have used those earnings to reduce that debt. I mean, it could not have gone worse than what actually happened. They would have been prepared for something unexpected like this. And I would argue in a much freer position to make some changes and hopefully bring that revenue back in the right direction. All right, I hope I was clear with all of that. For a quick recap, over the last decade, GNC has had over a billion dollars in liabilities. And even though they were consistently making money and turning a profit, they ignored the issue and instead decided to put money toward buying their own stock, which is now worthless. Let me know in the comments, do you agree with my assessment regarding GNC? I know that this video got pretty financial, but I think that's where the story is. Feel free to tell me if you think it has more to do with their sales or the stores or their customers. They did try this big transformation thing in 2016 where they remodeled stuff and changed their reward program and got this app to go along with it, but I don't see how it's affected them much. If you disagree, let me know. And any other thoughts you have about GNC, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.